Hello and welcome to another episode of Creative Secrets. This is James Hudnell and this episode is about the difference between the hero's journey and the story circle. Two things you may not be familiar with. I'm going to give you the rundown on what they are and how they work so you can use them effectively in your storytelling process. One is a really old concept and the other one is a more newer concept. Both are about universal story structure. The story structure that works in most stories. Once you understand it, you have a better understanding of how a story works and you can see it in place in millions of stories. The better ones do it properly and the bad ones usually do it wrong. And uh, yes, you can do it any way you want, but if you don't understand what you're doing first, you're likely to do things incorrectly and that leads to a lesser story than you could have made. Ideally, you want to make a story that's as effective as possible because you want people to remember it and you want people to come back for more stories. So that is where we're going through this stuff before I get into more detailed story structure information. If you watched episode two, which is about how it's about a story versus plot, I discussed Kurt Vonnegut's theory of storytelling, which is linear even though he was doing non-linear stories before Quentin Tarantino was even born. But he saw in a simple way how stories are told in this fashion. Anything north of the middle line is good things that can happen to the character. The further north you get, the better things are. And anything below the line is bad things. And the line across is time. So the starting point is the start of your story and the ending point is the end of the line. And where the character is at that point determines whether good things are happening to them or bad things. That's it in a nutshell. Now we talk about Joseph Campbell. In the late 1940s, Professor Joseph Campbell wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces in which he studied thousands of mythical stories from different cultures all around the world and in that book he described how there's a commonality to all these myths and that it can be broken down into a formula which he described this is what he called the monomyth and it's also called the hero's journey so we'll break down what it is and see how it flows into so many stories that you've seen in your lifetime that you don't realize follow this pattern In Vonnegut's chart, you see the middle line as being time. In this chart, you see it as known and unknown because this is about the character going on a journey and leaving lands that he is familiar with and entering lands that he is unfamiliar with. Just as discussed in the conflict episode, what's happening in the story is change. The character is going to go through some kind of change, which we'll explain as we go through this chart. So just keep in mind the two things. The character is leaving a familiar territory, entering an unfamiliar territory, and in the process of going through that territory, they're changed. And when they come out, they're a different person. That is the focus of this chart. When the story starts, the character is called to adventure because even though they're in familiar territory, things might be fine in the beginning, but for some reason they feel they must move forward to fix something. And in doing it, they seek the help of someone or something that can give them the power to make the change that they want. Whoever's or thing is going to help them, like say a guardian of some kind, they have to enter into a threshold of the mysterious world and in like a cave or something and unknown lands. And once they go into that, that's where the beginning of their transformation begins. They encounter a helper or a mentor usually, somebody who gives them information that they need in order to achieve the goals that they have. And they will go through a series of challenges and temptations, which is going to show us through their choices what kind of character they are, whether they're smart or whether they're dumb. And in the process, they learn something. At the apex of this process, they enter the abyss, death and rebirth, as it's called, the relevation. Basically, what happens here is they come to a massive conclusion. They find what they've been looking for completely different in some way than what they expect. And it leads them to a relevation either about themselves or about the situation. And they either take it or leave it. But in doing so, they go back where they started. And in the process of returning, they have to undergo a sort of atonement and realize the mistakes that they've made. 
and they're leaving the unknown world and returning back to lands that they're familiar with. Having gone through the trials that they've been through, sometimes they're given what is called the gift of a goddess, which is they're rewarded by the gods or by some event, and they can resolve whatever issues are remaining once they return home. So the hero's journey is kind of a cycle. It is a cycle where a person starts off one way and comes back another way. They come back different. As I said before, any story that doesn't involve some kind of change is a story that really has no meaning. A character needs to undergo some kind of arc or some kind of change, or the audience is going to feel like nothing happened in the story. The more consequences that happen, the more powerful the ending is. That's how you have a net change, a positive effect, a polarity, which I'll get into in a later episode. So this is the hero's journey in a nutshell. You can find out more about it if you do search on YouTube for the hero's journey, and I'm sure there's a lot of videos that explain it in more detail. All right, let's talk about the story circle, which is a theory that was developed by Dan Harmon of Community and Rick and Morty fame. He took Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, and he simplified it for a chart that makes it more in line with a modern story. The same principles are here. He simplified it down, and he just had one word to describe each point on the circle. And instead of the known and unknown world, what he has is order and chaos. So in the beginning of the story, you have you, which is established the protagonist. And so the character discovers that they need something. There's something that they want because things aren't right. There has to be a change. And so they go to accomplish that change. They are looking for something. They're searching for something. So when they go, they leave their ordered world that they know and enter a world that they don't know, a world where they don't know what to expect. And there's all kinds of trials on that road. And in the course of those trials, they find what they're looking for. And then comes the moment of truth, because there's a revelation as they discover that there's more to it than what they sought. At this point, so they take it. This is also called Meet Your Maker, because at this point, when they take it, they also have what is an epic battle, get possession of what they're seeking, and that is a life or death situation in many cases. Once again, they return to their starting point, and they're a different person. They've been changed by their experience. And so they return home, They've brought with them the thing that they seek, which is either knowledge or experience or it's some magical device. Whatever it is, the experience leaves them changed as in they experienced a character arc. And this is why this story is so eternal and why it's important to have some kind of arc. There has to be some kind of change. If your character is the same character that went into the story, then you didn't do your job because there should be more to it than that. Now, again, we talked about how in genre fiction, you have a hero going through the same basic story structure every time, and they don't change too much, like, for example, Batman or whatever. However, that is a structure that built for meeting the needs of the audience. The audience is paying to get basically the same experience over and over again. The problem with that is you have to find new ways to keep things fresh or you lose your audience. We'll, of course, be getting into that in a later chapter, but for now you got the exposure to the two different story structure methods. They're important to know and develop a checklist of the beats that I discussed for your story so you have an idea of the beats you want to hit in your story. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out the links below. Check out my new comic agenda, which is fastly approaching its end of its funding goal. So we're not there yet. We could really use your help, and I would really appreciate it. Please subscribe. Click the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.